Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. We have finally learned that Fable Williams is going to replace Dr. Nigel Clark as the new finance minister of Jamaica. That's Fable Williams is about to replace, will replace Dr. Nigel Clark as the new finance minister of Jamaica. Now, that's a very interesting sort of position for Fable Williams, and I'm sure she's qualified academically for the position, right? And most likely academically, she's qualified for the position. But we need something beyond academic qualification. Now, the observer cites here uh, her as her qualifications as Williams comes highly qualified for the position. She is a chartered financial analyst as a CFA by profession, has an MBA with concentration in finance from Wharton Business School and at the University of Pennsylvania and a BA cum laude in economics from Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So she comes as academically as a very well prepared person who is indoctrinated into the into the neoliberal institutions and how they function, right? And make no bones about it. That's what you'll get at the Wharton School and at the Harvard Business Schools, right? These schools are not geared towards teaching you about third world countries and how they function. They're not there to do that. They're there to continue with the status quo, right? To solidify the status quo and to have their graduates go out in the world and secure the world for the elites. Many of the students themselves don't even understand that. They think that what they're learning at Harvard and, and the Business School of Wharton is, the, is how the world should be governed and run. And that is not true if they should do further studies, if they should read their history. And I'm not suggesting here that everybody that is a graduate of Harvard School or the, school of the Business School of Wharton, the Wharton Business School, are people who are prepared and who are determined to, to shape the world in the realm of the elites. But you must understand that education is about indoctrinating. And a lot of times having graduated from these elite institutions, you cannot see the world in any other way, right? Because that is how you think that you have been educated by the best of the best, right? The most academic, and the highly brilliant uh, professors, the best of the best, the creme de la creme. And you think that their philosophies and their ideologies are the only, are the ideologies that should govern our world. But it is not so. A lot of times you do come in conflict. Ideologies do come in conflict with reality. When I was going to university, I had problems when I was writing my master's thesis with how my advisor then and I did not go to an elite, what you call an elite institution. But the fact of the matter is that I understood that a lot of what was being taught in terms of the theories, the theoretical frameworks, were not in alignment with realities, at least with the realities of the ordinary man and woman on the street. And that so often when we study economics, we are studying economics from that enlightened perspective, the enlightenment of the elites, not the enlightenment of the ordinary man and how they will survive and how the economy should be run. So let me just say that on that basis, I would say that academically, Fable Williams is highly qualified for the job, but does she understand the economy of Jamaica? That's the question I would like to ask. Is she going to fill the same shoes like Dr. Nigel Clark, who just simply did the bidding of the IMF? And I think that's exactly what she is going to do, right? And I think that she actually wrote, she penned a column. Let me see if I could find that column. But look, before we go to that column, if we can, because I did not pull that up when I came online, but we have here that Fable Williams named as new finance minister, Morris Dixon to take over education ministry. And we have Prime Minister Andrew Honus has, has named a member of parliament for St. Andrew East Rural, Fable Williams, to replace Dr. Nigel Clark as Jamaica's minister of finance. Williams will be replaced 
as the Minister of Education by Senator Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, Minister without portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for information, skills, and digital transformation. Now, in the meantime, recently elected Member of Parliament for St. Anne, Northeastern Matthew Samudo, returns to the Cabinet as Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. So we have here that Matthew Samuda, that was somebody that was touted also to have been on the list, uh, to have replaced Dr. Nigel Clark, is going to be working along with her, or is working, certainly working in the department of the Ministry of Growth and Job Creation, right? You know, I did ask in the last video, where is the economic growth? And where are the jobs? that were supposed to have been created on the, this Andrew Honus-led administration. Not much. He has not created a lot of jobs, shall we say. But I think that Matthew Samuda will be assisting Fable Williams in this ministry. Now, the important questions we'd like to ask is, are we still under uh, an IMF agreement? Many people are of the impression, some Jamaicans are of the impression that we are no longer under an IMF agreement. My understanding is that we are still under an IMF agreement until we bring down our debt to 60% of GDP. This particular you know, person to one of my respondees, um, responders, I should say, to one of my videos, um, actually said to me that as far as I, he's concerned, our debt to GDP has already been reduced to 60% of GDP. And I told him emphatically that it was not so. I don't think, I think up to last year, we were in the low 70s, right? So I don't think that we are yet at 60% of GDP. So what we need to learn, we need to hear from the government if we are, we have yet come to that level. And when are we going to end this sort of agreement with the IMF? And the current agreement, what are the conditionalities? What are the condi conditionalities of this loan agreement? This is what we want to hear from the government. Because, you know, now that Fable Williams is going to assume that role as Minister of Finance, we need some level of transparency. But, you know, Fable Williams wrote an article some time ago. Let me see if I could pull it up. I'm not sure I will be able to do that at this moment, um, in which she was castigating... Dr. Omar Davis for having, you know, written an article talking about austerity and the IMF. And, you know, she talked about uh, the fact she was defending. She was actually defending uh, Nigel Clark's tenure and his role as, uh, as Minister of Finance. Let me see if I could pull that off. But she wrote an article praising and she was quite effusive of Dr. Nigel Clark's tenure and his role as finance minister. So here's what she has to say. This is Fable Williams. And I think that when she wrote this article and she wrote it, let me share my screen with you. I could then see, I think that something is wrong, man. Hello? Yeah, I beg your pardon. I think that something is wrong with my, um, my video. Is something wrong with it? Yeah saw my thing sh jumping. Yeah, so let me see if I can share my screen with you uh, to see if we can um, get some information from what she was saying, the arguments that she actually included in this in this article. Yeah, I'm having this computer is acting up right now. Let me see if I can, all of these advertisements and so on. Okay, so we have here, she says, Fable Williams, Dr. Davis is out of touch. That's what she's saying. Because he was right, he wrote an article before talking about the fact that we are in this world of neoliberalism and that the IMF is perhaps is outdated. And um, she was responding to him and she says, like all of us, Dr. Davis, Omar Davis is a product of his times. He sees the world through the lenses of his experiences, some of which for the sake of Jamaica, we pray are never repeated. This does not disqualify him entirely, but it puts his musings into perspective. While from his op-ed in the Sunday Gleaner, it would seem as if he hasn't changed. The world has certainly moved on from his times. So she's saying that the world has moved on. But let us see what she's saying, the way in which the world or the ways in which the world has certainly moved on. 
In referencing to the IMF's relationship with Jamaica, Dr. Davis relates some of his experiences with the IMF, which we take at face value. Some of his descriptions are certainly supported by the enduring image of the late 1990s era, the IMF managing director, Mikel um, Kamadusos, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, hovering over Indonesian uh, President Suarto as the latter signed it into an austere IMF program in the area of the Asian financial crisis. So she's saying that in that era, in the 1990s, the IMF was in fact an austere institution. It seems like it's changing according to her. Let's see what she has to say. Notwithstanding that this IMF program swept away monopolies, subs subsidies, tariffs, and tax breaks for pet projects, which held the Indonesian economy back. The symbolism of the image was powerful and symbols matter. The interpretation of the image screamed that this was not Indonesia's choice. It was externally imposed. Today, Indonesia is a powerful member of the G20 with a thriving, dynamic, and high-growth economy. Now, they tended to talk about high growth. Everything is this high growth. What is Indonesia serving for the interest of the people? Because you might be, yes, in a high-growth economy, but growth for whom? Right? Growth for whom? And this is what we want to say. We just don't, we can't just say we're bringing down death, debt rather, and we are growing. But when we are growing and we, we have brought down our debt, how have those policies impacted on the economy as a whole, on the ordinary man? Because a lot of times we're always thinking about the people who are doing well and the rich, they get richer and the poor get poor. That is what we need to ask, assess, but we tend to be so obsessed with debt, debt reduction, debt reduction, let me be clear on that, debt reduction and also economic growth. These are the two obsessions of the IMF, right? As obsessed as the United States is with race, right? And identity politics, that is how the IMF is. They're obsessed with this debt reduction and economic growth. And I'm not here defending that there should not be economic growth. My suggestion is that if you are going to have economic growth, then it also should include the masses of people and they should see where they are growing to. If the economy is growing by leaps and bounds in terms of numbers on papers, then the people's lives also should be growing. There should be growth in the people's economy at their homes, in their business places. We should be seeing the thriving of new business enterprises. Instead, we're seeing the opposite. And we're seeing where the foreigners are coming to Jamaica and they're buying out Jamaica. And Jamaicans do not own the country in which they live. Now, today, Indonesia is a powerful member of the G20. We, we talked about that. Despite the humiliating image that captured the signing of the 1998 IMF agreement, Indonesia is much better off today due to the reforms and pursued under that IMF program. This is what now she continues to say. Dr. Davis wrote with misplaced pride about ending the boring relationship with the IMF in 2005. Now, this is interesting too, because we thought that the boring relationship with the IMF ended in 1995. But here, Fable Williams is saying that it really ended in 2005. Dr. Davis wrote with misplaced pride about ending the boring relationship with the IMF in 2005, while Jamaica experienced chronic macro instability. History will, in time, if not, see that as an era, Jamaica was in an economic crisis long before 2005 because of the FinSAC, the FinSAC debacle, which the then government failed to address. This is no secret. We know that we, he's not talking about the things that in the back of. The house was on fire and there seemed to be little urgency. Sure, having the IMF help Jamaica sort out the imbalances in 2005 or before would have been politically costly. However, given the gravity of the problems and the impact on opportunity, greater political maturity should have been applied. So she's actually suggesting that from 2005, we should have then... We should have been engaging the IMF. We should have long been under austerity. No, this is what your now Minister of Finance is proposing. 
in her article, and that this article was written some weeks ago. Time has shown that with the technical and the financial support of the IMF and with political will, these problems were solvable because these white people, right, these austere financial institutions, these neocolonial neoliberal institutions are the ones which are going to dictate to us, tell us what to do because we are the slaves and we do not know how to run the economy in the interest of the masses of people on the island. This is what she's implying here. This is what she's inferring. And I hope that you are looking closely at the message because everything our politicians say is a message that they are sending to you. Everything is messaging and you have to look beyond what they're telling you. History is therefore also likely to conclude that it was a reckless abdication of responsibility for Dr. Davis to stubbornly leave that mess for future generations. Right, So she's saying, therefore, that Dr. Davis should have, from 2005, should have engaged the International Monetary Fund, even though we said that we had been to talk to them in 1995. I wonder how true that was. And what role did the IMF, if they had any role, what role did they have in the FinSAT debacle? We want to know that. Because all of this Jamaica Redevelopment Program Right? We are learning that it was not a Jamaican domestic organization. Right? It was an American-owned investment company with a Jamaican name. Right? And you really wonder when Prime Minister PJ Patterson said that we had bidded goodbye to the to the IMF, if that was true. Was that true? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Dr. Davis's op-ed relies on labels such as Washington Consensus and avoids discussing macroeconomic conditions in 2005. As such, Jamaicans are less interested in his labels. They do not want to be in a position where their tax dollars are gobbled up in interest payments. They do not want high unemployment or an unstable economy. Right, so this is what so she's guarding the efforts of the International Monetary Fund. Right, and she goes on and she explains why Dr. Davis should have really engaged, should have retained the services of the International Monetary Fund from way back in 2005. Right? And she's lauding the efforts also of the IMF. These IMF agreements became successful to a significant degree as they became Jamaica's agreement, not the IMF's agreement. <laughs> Let me repeat this. These IMF agreements became successful to a significant degree as they became Jamaica's agreements, not the IMF's agreements. So all of these agreements that we've had, these austere agreements, in fact, Jamaica was beholden to the most austere IMF program or agreement on, in the history of the IMF, right? We were restricted to that very severe, very austere program, and yet still Faber Williams is telling us that that was not the IMF's program, that was a Jamaica's program, right? Even when we said we wanted 7.5, when we're running a primary surplus of 7.5, Barbados could not, you know, handle that and they argued for a lower one, right? Greece could not afford to have, to be running a primary surplus of four and they argued for a 3.5. Hmm? Yet still, we were so much disciplined. Our government is so much disciplined and organized that they were willing to put us under the most austere IMF agreement in the history of the IMF, and because it is dubbed, according to Fable Williams, as the Jamaican agreement, not the IMF's, IMF's agreement, but the Jamaican agreement. Now, this is the person who we're just about to have as Minister of Finance. This is her philosophy. Business, unions, civil society owned the agreements and held the government's feet to the fire to ensure that they were implemented. IMF representatives and leadership engaged with stakeholders, including the opposition, 
participated in many public fora, listened and explained. So, Dr. Davis, the world has moved on since your time. <laughs> the world has moved on, including the IMF. The IMF is much more benevolent and they are not going to tell us what we need to do. They are just there to facilitate the austerity of their program. They are not there to impose the policies. This is what the educated Dr. Uh, Faber Williams is saying, a graduate of Harvard University and the Wharton Business School. This is what is in her brain. And you really wonder her understanding of geopolitics. Or is she just lying? Does she lack the moral rectitude to be lying to the Jamaica people in which she's doing? Because she cannot be that naive. Right? Faber Williams cannot be that naive to think that the IMF is there to assist us and to facilitate the program, and the program is the Jamaican program. I mean, if it were the Jamaican program, why didn't we argue for a lower primary surplus, a 4.5, or even a 4, would do us very well, right? The IMF changed, and Jamaica has also changed. I am not sure if Jamaica has changed. I think that we are still there. The experiment is still there and it's not growing, it's not expanding. Perhaps the IMF has changed in terms of it has become more austere and more draconian, but certainly not benevolent, benevolent and certainly by no stretch of the imagination, democratic. This is not a democratic institution. So it will never go to any country and facilitate and have that program be geared towards the interest of the locals there. Though fiscal rectitude is non-negotiable for the fund, this is not your 1990s IMF, as is widely acknowledged internationally and as Jamaica's experience demonstrates. Right? As Jamaica's experience demo um, demonstrates. And look at how she ends her, <laughs> her article with this effusive praise of Dr. Nigel Clark, the best minister of finance that Jamaica has ever seen and will ever see. Oxford graduate, former Rhodes, well, still a Rhodes Scholar, right? A Rhodes Scholar, right? One who should be on Wall Street making billions of dollars if not millions of dollars, right? But he was so humble and he decided that he would shepherd the Jamaican economy and bring us, lead us into the land of prosperity, the land of milk and honey. Has he really done that? We celebrate Dr. Clark's appointment to the IMF. It is a powerful and global symbol of Jamaica's success after all. Symbols do matter because Jamaica is all about symbolisms. So now that Fable Williams is the new finance minister of Jamaica, she's also a new symbol of the IMF's progress. <laughs> and she will continue in the, in the tradition of symbolisms because that is what Jamaica is all about. That is Jamaica to the world. We are just a country with little but with Talawa. And all we want to do all we want to do is to showcase people who have gone to Harvard, people who have the fastest man in the world, we have the best music, we have the best food, all those symbolisms to the world. And at the end of the day, there is no development and there is no sort of policy system that is indicative that at any time soon, we are on the road to economic development. Because if this is what, the current, the just about to be current Minister of Finance is suggesting she is on full board with what the IMF is all about. And before I end this video, let me just say what Andrew Honus is saying, because sometimes you think, you know, this guy, I'm too stupid, right? I don't know what I'm talking about. But the Gleaner reported when talking about the, the um, Fable Williams coming to this position, this is the words coming from your Prime Minister, the fact, the reason why he has selected her to be the prime, the new finance minister. 
this is the effusive um, praise that he is also um, hurling uh, at her. Um, these appointments, these appointments are designed to maintain stability and minimize disruption in the function of the government, said Holness, right? It's to, it's, you know, so <laughs> let me repeat that. This is what your prime minister is saying. These appointments, the one that, you know, the appointment as um, that he has just done electing Fable Williams as the Minister of Finance. These appointments are designed to maintain stability and minimize disruption in the function of the government. Because anybody who dare come, who dares come to, 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 um, to, to, to challenge the status quo of the government and to say that no, what the IMF is doing is wrong, is immoral, right? And is suffocating the growth of Jamaicans. Anybody who dares say that, they are not going to be tolerated. Welcome to Jan Rock, the land of democracy. In fact, it is one of the most robust democracies in the Caribbean and Latin America. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Remember now to leave your comments and let me know if you think if Doctor, not Doctor, but Miss, I think she's Miss, right? Mrs. Faber Williams, is she married? I'm not sure if she is the best minister that the prime minister could have selected, right? Let me know if you think that she will do a fantastic, whether or not you think, maybe you do think that she will do a fantastic job. We hope for the sake of Jimmy, because I don't think that she's going to do a fantastic job. I think she's going to just be one of the, an empty shell. She's going to be an empty shell, as it were, for the IMF. Thank you so much. All the best to you. See you then.